chairman of Fula Chebukati, who was expected to hold a press conference, yeah, somehow instead decided to do away with the press conference. And many hours later, late into the night, in fact in the early hours of this morning, released a lengthy statement, a written one, to media houses. Yeah. And this was supposed to be an answer to the very serious issues raised by the DCI boss, George Kinoti. And in that statement there are contradictions. Now on my show today, I'm going to focus on those contradictions. But I'm also going to do something else. Very shocking. Yeah. I mean this information. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. My recommendation is that you sit down for this one. I am going to reveal what the stickers are really supposed to do. Yeah. And why they are a very key item in our elections. And why if they were to fall in the wrong hands. Ay, 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 ay. Many things can go wrong. And of course I'm going to explain it in simple language which you can all understand. Because when you start telling people about Kim's kits, blah, 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 electronic transmission, blah, 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 it's easy to get confused. I break it down to standard two. Yeah, and I'm not insulting anybody's intelligence. Yeah. A very clever man called Albert Einstein really believed in simplifying everything, even the most complex things. And so do I. My sincere apologies. I'm not rubbishing all those years you slogged in school and universities and some of the best learning institutions in the entire world. No. Simplicity is always key. And that is what I'm going to do. And the revelation that comes out of this video, I... Anyway, please remember to give me a like to encourage me. Yeah. And also to help my videos have a wider reach. All for a better Kenya. Now one thing I assure you. Despite the complex issue we are dealing with here. This is not going to be a boring show. No way. And I am sure you are going to enjoy it thoroughly. Right guys. Tende Kaze. Now, before we go into our show today, I think it is important for all of us to go to a police training college briefly. <laughs> I'm not kidding you, okay? Because there's a very important aspect here we all have to take careful note of so that now everything will make perfect sense. And I'll start by asking a question. How do you know that somebody is lying? What is one of the easiest ways of knowing that somebody is either lying or hiding something? And of course, when you're hiding something, you're lying. You're not telling the truth. Well, one of those ways is when that person contradicts themselves. And now you can understand, we're in the police training college, now you can understand why. Policemen all over the world, when they're asking you questions, will ask you the same question over and over again. They just slightly rephrase it. <laughs> yeah. They ask you that question, then they ask you another one, another one, and then they rephrase the first question in a different way and ask you. Now, if you're not telling the truth, at the end of all that, you'll contradict yourself. It's that simple. Because human nature is such that 
the most difficult part of telling a lie can you guess what it is has to do with your memory remembering this is a lesson i learned from my political lecturer you see please allow me to tell you a very brief story very interesting yeah so that we all understand this very clearly in the late 70s my late political lecturer held a senior position in the police he was actually in charge of the railways and he got into serious trouble because he stopped he actually impounded the coffee belonging to a very powerful person in Kenya at the time and this particular person whose coffee was impounded was linked to the Kiambu mafia and therefore he started receiving death threats we mwikamba unafikiri wewe nani tutamaliza wewe kabisa tutakata hiyo makende yako unacheza na sisi i'm serious he received very serious threats from very powerful people in kenya for doing his job for doing the right thing And so one day when he had to make a trip to Mombasa he told his wife my mother that he was going to Kisumu that's the first precaution he took And so we all knew dad had gone to Kisumu but actually had gone to Mombasa And when he arrived in Mombasa and this is the part that is very relevant to what we are discussing he booked in into the hotel that had been reserved for him by the government paid for by the government yeah because it was an official business and then he sneaked out through the back door and went and booked himself in in another hotel and of course he gave a false name he told a lie and then the next day after his duties he booked himself in into yet another hotel with yet another different false name yeah now this is where his police training kicked in in order to ensure that the memory part of telling the lie was solid yeah the first name he gave was that of his first born brother yeah the first to tell he booked in there's no way he could forget that now he was a second born so the second hotel he booked in he gave the name of the third born brother or the brother who followed him yeah his blood brother and so on and so forth he gave their names without using the surnames and so it was very easy if for instance he walked back into the hotel in the evening and then somebody shouted hey george and he could not immediately remember that that was the name he was going by <laughs> in this particular hotel you would be in trouble because that is a trick somebody would use to find you but if that receptionist shouted the name of his brother he would have to pay attention and then he would quickly remember that it's him you get my drift anyway let's proceed i hope you enjoyed that story a very true story and that is the end of our session at the police training college <laughs> i hope you enjoyed it at the police training college for detectives okay now the very sad news about the latest controversy over the venezuelans and the ibc and wafula chebukati the chairman is that bwana chebukati has started contradicting himself ay 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 yeah now based on our training received today that can only mean one thing he is hiding something he is definitely not telling us the truth now the chairman of the abc has contradicted himself over this issue a few times but let's take the most glaring one 
You will remember that when the Venezuelans were first arrested, the chairman told us that the police are interfering with a very important part of the preparations for the general elections. I'm sure we all remember that. Now, the latest story from the chairman of the IBC is that the stickers which were impounded are in fact non-strategic. They're not very important. The election can still go ahead without them. That's the implication. Now, isn't that a contradiction? Isn't that a complete contradiction? Because if it wasn't, what the chairman would have said when the Venezuelans were first arrested was that the police had interfered with the preparations for the elections. But fortunately, what had been impounded was non-strategic. But still the IBC was not taken kindly. I'm saying this is what you'd have said. But still the IBC was not taken kindly to the harassment by the police of people involved with the preparations for general elections. Something like that. But folks, there's even sadder news. Because in that same statement, there is an even bigger contradiction. The stuff that was impounded, the stickers, are non-strategic. But what are the stickers used for? What is this non-strategic thing that these stickers, which these Venezuelans were smuggling in, and the personal effects, what non-strategic purpose do they have that is linked to the election? Now you're going to want to sit down for this one. Chebukati himself has told us that the stickers have a unique barcode. These stickers go into the KEMS kit. What? Now what does this kit do? This kit has the biographic and biometric data of all voters in that particular polling station. Bila Kizungumingi, it has the details of the voters in that particular polling station. It also has a SIM card and something called an SD card. Folks, this is the thing which is used, wait for this one, to transmit results. Now, I don't know if it has sunk in yet. But let me continue. In simple words, this chem skit is the most sensitive part of our elections. Wouldn't you agree? And these stickers have a unique barcode. And what would be the purpose for that? The purpose for that would be so that somebody does not switch them around. Somebody does not play games with them. So that it is the real thing which transmits the real results. I'm sure we're together up to that point. And so, would you agree with the chairman that these stickers are non-strategic? Hell no! How? <laughs> wa 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 na kwambia hi maneno ni mzito folks this is something very serious non strategic ah uh ah -uh. uh -uh. uh -uh. uh -uh. never never ever now it is interesting and super fascinating that most of those barcodes, a vast majority of them, are for polling stations. And by the way, there are 10,000 of them. 
a vast majority of them are for polling stations in wait for this one in the Mount Kenya region ah <sighs> now just as a matter of interest in the upcoming elections we're going to have a total of 46232 polling stations countrywide 10000 polling stations is close to a quarter of the total polling stations we're going to have around the country yeah for those who might be interested in that information but let us proceed let us imagine a very fictional example hypothetical example and it is all based on somebody asking the question how would somebody play around with these stickers what can you do with them to mess up an election or to fiddle with an election okay so let us create an imaginary situation and of course it is all based on facts what we know so far because something important to note here is that these stickers are not going to the IBC they are going to a private office private residence okay now if somebody had those stickers and somebody also had some spare Kim's kits. Yeah. And then they stuck those barcodes in their kits. And they had somebody on the inside at the IBC. So that the kits which were outside the jurisdiction of the IBC were registered amongst the polling stations. And so when the results are transmitted think you're already getting my drift the results of 10,000 polling stations will not come out of those particular polling stations all over the country no they will come from some locations outside those polling stations yeah now you know a sim card can be traced yeah it is possible to look and discover all these results are coming from one location yeah so somebody who wants to fiddle the election would have to make sure that each of those kids are close to those particular polling stations which is not a problem just hand it over to one of your agents in that particular polling station and they transmit the results you want them to transmit including the votes you want them to add as they transmit game Short deal done. And so, do you still believe that these stickers are non strategic? They have no consequence. They are not very important. They are not very significant. Do you still believe these stickers being smuggled into the country and they don't go straight to the IBC strong room? but instead go to some residence or some office, private residence, private office. Do you still believe that is a non-issue? Because I don't. I think it is something very, very alarming. And by the way, yeah, for those guys who are very concerned about details, the information I've used today has come out of the latest statement released by Chairman Wafula Chebukati in answer to the issues raised by the DCI boss George Kinoti. And it is interesting to note the following two very important points. Chebukati's statement came 48 hours after Kinoti had raised these issues. Yeah, we can imagine a situation where Chebukati is being interrogated in public by the DCA boss and we're witnesses we're hearing what they're saying and we're hearing the answers so this person has been asked a question by detectives he has taken 48 hours to respond and there's more point number two chairman Chebukati has avoided answering key issues very important issues that Bwana Kinoti has raised. 
For example, Bwana Chebukati should have shown us evidence that these individuals are actually employed by a contractor working for the IBC. He has not even addressed the issue. Yeah. And so, Bwana Kenoti's theory stands that these three individuals are not working for the IBC and neither are they working for any IEBC agents or companies that IEBC has contracted to do anything with our elections. Yeah, that should be clear. And I think it is also instructive that initially we were told that Bonache Bukati was going to hold a presser. Yeah, it was going to be a full press conference with the media there. And of course in such a situation, it have fielded questions. But at the last minute, this was cancelled. And then late at night, early this morning actually, yeah, Wafula Chebukati sent out a printed statement to media houses. That is very instructive. Maybe the man was busy. I don't know. But in my view, this is something which is so important. And it is so important to clear the air that it was worth putting down everything and dealing with this. Honestly. And by telling Kenyans nothing but the whole truth about this issue. But when somebody is trying to hide something, or when somebody is telling us half-truths, or when somebody wants to avoid an issue, then Kenyans have got no option but to be very suspicious. It's natural. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.